the superintendent is still required by law to develop evaluation policy and get district court approval. Uh, there are still going to be annual summary conferences, an annual performance report, individualized professional development planning, whether you call it um, PDC or, or HIP, personal improvement plans. Those are still required. Three observations with post-observation conferences for all non-tenant teaching staff by April 30th each year. And you still are required to have a, a mentoring program for novice teachers. So all of those things are the same. When you look, uh, we've been talking about the Danielson model. That is actually the first piece of this puzzle. The teacher practice model that the board approved uh, is just that, the Danielson model. And that's performance based on the teacher practice instrument given through preliminary through uh, observations. Now the new piece is going to require us to take uh, SGP data, which the state will provide us, and that's student growth uh, percentiles, and the SGO data, which will be developed in addition to get a, a combination of the sum of the grade. You know, tested grades, four through eight, language arts and math. When you look at how it's all weighted, you're going to see 30% the SGP, 15% is the SGL, and 55% is that Danielson model we talked about. So when you break it all out, those are the percentages that it's all going to be rated to. And that's just the tested areas, where it's only Now when you look at the non-tested grades, 13, 14, doesn't look all that fair, but the Danielson model will be representative of 85% of their basic summary score. 15% will be based on the SGOs, and they'll have to do two SGOs as opposed to one that somebody had a question SGP. did. Now, future targets, though, are going to be more in line with the tested area. The state has said that this is a work in progress and we're trying to move forward, but for 13 14, that is the breakdown of the challenge. So, Dr. this is the, the requirements for our non tenured and our tenured observations throughout the year now. What's different here is although we're still seeing non-tenured teachers three times, it's differentiated between years one and two and three and four. So what you see is for years one through two, on a first year or second year teacher, I'm going to be observed three times. Two of those are long observations, which consist of 40 minutes. And then one of those is a short observation, which consists of 20 minutes. All of them using the Danielson framework and a TeachScape um, tool in managing that. If I'm a, a year three or four teacher, it swaps out. I'm still seeing three, seeing um, a teacher three times, however, one long and two short. So it trades off there. Now here's the difference. In a tenure teacher, we're used to seeing them once in a year as a requirement. Now we're required to see them three times in a short observation model of 20 minutes. So we'll see them three times for 20 minutes if they have tenure. If a teacher is um, noted to be ineffective, or partially ineffective and gets put on a corrective action plan, they have one more additional observation as what's listed there. Yes. If more are required? Yes. Um, district can obviously choose to do more, but I'll be Quite honest and frank, I don't know how we physically could do anymore. This is a lot of more additional observations on us. Um, because note also at the bottom, it also talks about pre-conferences that are necessary and post-conferences that are required too, all of which add to the amount of time it takes to observe. It's not just going in and seeing um, the teacher using the data as a framework, but it's talking ahead of time, having a pre-conference, and then talking afterwards, which adds to the amount of minutes that you are, you know, working with that teacher. Nicole, how, how many previously, how many observations um, were required previously? For tenure teachers? One. 
Now tell you history. That's where it's the same. However, it's traded off with long and short within that non-tenured piece. Um, it's the tenured piece to this regulation that really ups those observations. Yes. So being that the observation piece is a, a significant part um, and that we have board approved the Danielson framework, um, I want to show you a quick clip that talks about the Danielson framework and will actually hear from Danielson herself. No, can that go louder? Can't hear anything over here. You moved the microphone over.
classroom environment, three is instruction, and four is professional responsibility. What you see underlined between two and three are the observable ones. As we go in and observe those, the two areas that we are looking for, they're more observable than the other two domains. Underneath those domains, not that I expect you to read all of them, but I want you to know that there are components underneath those domains that make each one of those up, and that teachers have gone through those, we've trained on these areas, and what constitutes good effective teaching in those areas. Teachers are evaluated through their observations with a rubric, a four-level rubric. And what we say to our, our staff is that we want you to, to um, your performance to be at a level three, but you may vacation from time to time at a level four. But teachers by nature, including myself, are perfectionists, and they always want to achieve that four all the time. So it's really important that we start out and say, if you're at a three, it's good, it's okay. That's good instruction. And from time to time, we go above that level, and we exceed it, but not every lesson is going to be at a four. Now, um, during the past year, we've talked about this a lot, but also by law. Uh, all teaching staff members uh, being evaluated must be trained on the evaluation rubric. We've, we've uh, uh, I'm very happy to say we're well ahead of that curve. I mean, we've spent a tremendous amount of time uh, in speaking to other districts. I, I think we uh, are well, well beyond what they did to, to train their staff. Uh, before observing for the purpose of evaluation, all observers must be trained. Um, all of our administrators were trained last summer, were tested last summer, and passed the test. All observers also must participate in two co-observations. We've done that and we're continuing with the model that all summer. Uh, all evaluators must participate in yearly refresher training that's ongoing, and that's how we're addressing it on an ongoing basis, not just one uh, quick hour and done. Uh, and uh, I must certify every year that the observers, for the purpose of the evaluation, have been trained. And I've already done that. So, we're well about that. Um, all students can show growth. Calculating stu uh, student growth percentiles, uh, that's the SGP. Well, that's a measure that we're actually going to get from the state. Uh, it's going to be scored on a 1 to a 99. And growth baseline is established by the student's prior learning as measured by all of the New Jersey F schools. So in other words, the state said, well, we're moving to Clark, but we have all of this rich data by testing New Jersey F for many, many years. It would be ridiculous to throw that out. So really, they're going to be using that data. And then, obviously, as years go on, and we're in the park more, and that New Jersey F data will become the park data, but you're not going to disregard that. So the SGP is based on the median score that a teacher receives. So again, it's important to put it in context. So the context is if I'm a teacher, these are the um, scores, the SGP scores for my class and with this past NJS administration. They will take the median score from my class and that becomes my SGP. Now we're told that the score won't be um, 55 that's listed there as an SGP, but rather a rating of a scan scale of one to four. Um, so that that is then calculated with the formula we saw later. To so reminder, this is for the tested areas. So the teachers who are in tested areas, it's four through eight receive an SGP this year. We don't know when they will receive them, but we are told they will. The other thing that's important to know about SGPs is that the state is saying if there is um, multiple years of data for a teacher, they will use the multiple years of data as an extended list and take a meaning score of that versus a smaller list. So really trying to give the teacher the benefit of the doubt here with the best score possible. Also important to know is even if a teacher may be in a tested area, if they don't have 20 students assigned to them, they will not receive an SGP for that year. 
However, that's cumulative. So if I don't have 20 students this year, but next year, if they have 10 this year and I have 10 next year, and that makes the 20, build the SGP exam. So that's the difference there. This situation mostly would apply like in a special ed situation where there are um, smaller groups of instruction happening. Um, the student also has to be in the district 70% of the time in order for, or a teacher, in order to receive an SGP. So as I mentioned earlier, teachers will receive an SGP in tested areas, and then they're also required to have an SGO. Teachers who are not in an a tested area have to have two SGOs, and that's the breakout you see there in blue. And an SGO is a student growth objective. Really what it is, if you're familiar with goal setting, is a SMART goal. It's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Um, and we are, we'll be getting to work on setting those SGOs with our staff. As soon as they return, we'll be looking at inventory data, baseline data, and using all sorts of assessments that we put into place in the last year. Here's just an example of what the state has put out in one example of a possible goal that could be written. So you see the goal right there in blue, 80% of students increase at least one proficiency level on a text reading and comprehension assessment as a district assessment. And then the rubric that follows, everything is related to a four-point ranking there. So if the rubric is converted to a four-point rubric, if 90% of the students meet that goal, the teacher receives a four for their SGO rating, and so on. This is just an example of using, if, um, so for example, some of the special areas use rubrics on their assessments, or in, in, even in some of the other areas, this is an example of a rubric. 90% or more students meet the goal of achieving um, a more specific goal of seven out of nine skills on a, again, district-developed assessment. This is the timeline we have in place this year for SGO writing. So as you can see, we have through November 15th to work with our staff and administrators in setting those goals. And then you also, most importantly, what I always say to staff is not just the goal setting, but what are we doing behind the goal setting, which is the action planning and following through with the actions to meet the goal. So there's a timeline for doing that as well. Video check-in, how are we doing? How are we getting close to meeting that goal? change in our instruction to meet that goal now. And then at the end of the year, reviewing in May and June if they reach the SGO. Uh, this is um, what the state has sent us, and this could change as well, and they've said that, but at this point, this is what we're going to think for how they're going to break out. Uh, this is for teachers in a tested area. So, like we said before, in a tested area, 50% of the weight is going to be the teacher practice or the damage in mind. So their observations. So say their raw score came up three. Uh, that would be weighted by 50%, or in other words, they'd have a weighted score of 1.5. Say their student growth percentile uh, was a 2.2, and that's weighted 35%, and then get 0 0.77, 0 0.7 of that, and then the student growth objective came up with three, and then I'll get weighted 15%, so we get 0.45, you total that. And the scale that we've seen, and this is the only scale we've seen at this point, would be 1 to 1.75 to 2.5, etc. That teacher would be rated as an effective teacher at the end of the seminar grade. So all of that would be, be done at the end of the year once all of that is done. Teachers rated ineffective or partially effective receive support through corrective action plans. Once the system is fully implemented, districts will be able to identify highly effective teachers and it's our hope that, uh, as the state has said it, that we want to look at different protocols to recognize those highly effective teachers, whether it be expanded career pathways, leadership opportunities, awards recognitions, um, pathways maybe, and the state has even talked about different ways to uh, rate that if they do it over a continual period of time instead of the standard observation. Yes, Chris? Awards and recognition? I'm sorry? The last line, yeah. What does that mean? Um, what that would mean would maybe from a board perspective, all the highly effective teachers be recognized by the board. Um, it could eventually mean merit pay. Uh, it, it could it could mean a, a litany of things. It could be um, depending on how this all plays out. They, if they're over an extended period of time, they could 
maybe not have to do the exact same evaluation uh, observation model and do some type of project. That's what, um, when you look at pathways and things like that. Pathways used to be a term that um, tenured, highly effective teachers uh, that were rated in the district could do a project or something like that and be rated that way. And so there's a lot of that. It could be. It could. I mean, I think we're light years away from that. This is something that the state's going out there with an adventure like the death did. But yeah, if, if, um, if Murray K becomes part of the equation, that would be part of the collective bargaining agreement then. And obviously, we as a group would have to, just like we look at anything else, we would have to uh, budget for it. So in closing, I'll just let you, I'll actually, I'll read this to you. This is a very important quote that I've shared with our staff. Regulations are regulations, I even said that to you, like the HIP regulations and the training we did. So you have to find, you know, make lemonade and lemons. So what's most important to me is professional development and making the most effective teachers we possibly can have. And this quote speaks to that. A commitment to professional learning is important. Not because teaching is of poor quality and must be fixed, but rather because teaching is so hard and we can always improve it. No matter how good a lesson is, we can always make it better. Just as in other professions, every teacher has a responsibility to be involved in a career-long quest to improve practice, and that's the approach we're taking here. This is about improving our practice. Thank you. Any questions? If a teacher is rated ineffective or partially ineffective, and they receive the support, and they're still rated ineffective or partially ineffective, what happens? Well, if they're uh, completely ineffective, um, I believe the, the law is pretty clear that I would um, be filing tenure changes. Right, Mark? Yeah, two years in a row, the ineffective the law mandates that we file tenure charges. The law also mandates that the teacher be dismissed by the arbitrator unless the teacher can somehow show that the charges were filed for discriminatory reasons or you didn't follow your own evaluation model or so forth. And then you have discretion if the um, evaluation is ineffective one year and partially effective one year, you don't have to necessarily file those charges. Question? Okay. Thank you. I tend to think merit recognition and more pay is somewhere where this is going to end up in some future. You said it might be a long way out, okay? Um, in that interim period where two years go by when before you file tenure charges, some consideration should also be given to the motion pay, if you will. If you're not doing it, I'm not only not going to give you what, I'm going to take something away. And it's got to be a two-way street. It can't be a one-way street here. And a lot of things that you always see people. Will all the corrective action plans be put in writing with sign-offs from both parties? Yes, just as we do now. Debbie, yeah. I'm sorry. Debbie, well, that's not. okay. Will there be carbon copies so that they don't disappear out of files, as we've had done in the past? We're actually using a management system called TeachSpeak, so it's all electronic, and we will also have paper backup. Okay. Carbon copies, you are dating yourself. Well, when you send an email and you put a CC, that's carbon copied. Yeah. Thank you. That's true. Thank you, Dr. Jenko. Thank you, Mr. Hey, this time, um, we'll move on to agenda additions and or deletions. There are none. Uh, public comments, which there are none. We're going to move on to the presentation of committee reports. We're going to start while well, buildings and grounds. Uh, Mr. Giannakis is not here. I don't think any of his committee members are going to report for this big so we can do it next time. Okay, next uh, curriculum. I do have a report. Um, in our curriculum meeting, uh, curriculum student activity meeting, uh, we reviewed the 
with all those objectives for last year. And the status was shared with everyone, um, and all objectives will be complete by the end of the summer. Um, we also um, recognize the supervisors and curriculum coordinator, and as well as Mrs. Permelli for the excellent and hard work they've done one year and during the summer in order to achieve all of these objectives. Um, High School Applied Arts Electives Review is supposed to be completed and implemented for next year, 2014-15. Currently under review, um, we're looking at offering new 21st century classes, eliminating outdated ones, uh, maybe looking into implementing some STEM classes. So a whole complete revision of our Applied Arts Department. Um, g and we're looking into bringing Lego Robotics as a pilot of the g and program this year as well as um, adding to the current curriculum K-5 to and revising the curriculum 6-8. to eight. Uh, Resources for world language and other areas, um, we'll see a whole lot of resources that are going to be approved tonight. Um, French, Spanish, world history, uh, graphic arts, TV production, finance. Uh, so we will do that as well. Our iPad survey and expansion, um, we had a wonderful um, um, iPad actually demonstration our video that was made by Mr. Nars uh, Calc class from this past year. They did the pilot for our kids, and they did a wonderful job. And it was really very informative and encouraging to see the many ways in which these students were able to use the iPads for their studies. Um, we want to expand on that. Um, we're looking at the high school freshman academy. We would like, if possible, to do AP literature. It may not be possible this year, um, but we are definitely going to do the high school freshman academy. Um, high school co-op program, um, there were six to, six to seven students last year, we have 14 signed up for September, and this class is basically a work in progress, um, you know, um, reaching out to other schools to see maybe how they run their programs, and to making it look a little bit better than, than it currently is. Uh, career day, um, we reviewed what, what happened in career day, um, we have two currently that are going on usually at the high school, again, this is all at the high school level. Uh, some of the examples, they spoke with a woman who won cup, uh, Cupcake Wars, Military and Armed Forces, were at the Spring Career Day. Um, iTunes University did Veterinary Medicine Lecture. Um, so there was a lot going on during the career days they are going to continue. High School uh, Student Senior Survey, we received 77 responses, um, so we went over some of the feedback there. Freshman Academy, we had 24 students last year. They really did quite excellent and will be moving on to academic and basic classes. Um, we're going to again try to use iPads. We have 17 students uh, enrolled so far this year. Uh, our co-curricular report, um, we're just looking at recommendations for new clubs and actually maybe sunsetting uh, some of the clubs which are no longer as popular as they used to be. Uh, option two, we had seven to eight seniors who used it for electives and it was extremely um, successful for this purpose and we're looking maybe to expand it a little bit this year. Uh, GPA status and ranking, um, we looked at different options and um, we're going to be going with what we called option three. Um, it will basically start with an A plus value and go down from there. Um, it will also start with this year's freshman class and will not affect the sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Um, it will better help align our grades to colleges and universities. AP testing results, the numbers went up to 89 students taking the test, 181 exams were given, um, which is the highest number of students to take AP exams in three years, and everyone who enrolled in the AP class took the AP exam. Uh, team prevention, um, we're on target for surveying uh, this fall, and the staff will be trained in September and October. Uh, preschool numbers at the time of our meeting, we were at 157 currently enrolled in Future Stars, which was great. Uh, summer trainings, curriculum, and assessment writing, uh, there were a tremendous, tremendous amount, if you look at the agenda, of training going on this summer. And again, I just want to thank Mrs. Cromelli and um, Mr. Radulowski and um, our two supervisors, Mr. Parisi and Mrs. Gamble, for all of their hard work this summer in, in putting all these programs and training sessions on for the teachers. Um, new teacher orientation uh, uh, actually is taking place this week at Roosevelt School. Uh, Latchkey, um, at, again, as of our meeting, the Latchkey numbers were 63. They have increased since then. Um, and staff is, is, will be hired at this meeting, um, our next meeting, actually our regular meeting. Adult High School, we have uh, 10 students possibly enrolled. 
Uh, we will be running this for one more semester, and we are looking at eliminating it in January. Um, our grading procedures, grades five to eight, uh, will be implemented this September. Um, and the high school, uh, there is a committee that is working on, uh, on looking at the grading procedures, and we hope to implement something uh, next year in 14-15, and then that is it. Uh, finance. Um, I, I don't have, we, we did excellent. They did really, really well with the AP exams. There were maybe two subjects where grades went down slightly over last year, so that is being looked into, but overall the students did really well. I mean, I don't have the number of one, two, threes, and fours with me, but I can certainly get that for next month's meeting. Or I can, I can contact you on that. Uh, finance, uh, we had a meeting last night, and, um, just a couple of financial questions that came up in conversations we had. Uh, we spent a few extra dollars over in the brain school replacing the rug, I believe. I don't know exactly how much, maybe you this little bar remembers, but I don't recall. Uh, um, I asked about questions about the high school gym, everybody know we had a debate and process going up there. Uh, pretty much it's almost complete, not quite complete yet, but I was just curious as to whether there were any cost overruns. And uh, really there were two issues, was, and one was a, a painting of the floor issue. I think they want to have some special paint around on the sidelines of the gym floor, which I believe they're going to go ahead with. And the other one was a the cost of reinstalling the bleachers. Uh, I think we'll have some conversation later on today with the board up in the executive session. Talk about uh, status of insurance proceeds from Sandy. If, uh, we've received all of the insurance money that was due from us from our insurance carriers, we were over 200,000. Uh, we are waiting for some FEMA money, and that's a little over 400, almost close to 450,000, and that is pending yet. Uh, we talked about some preliminary, preliminary numbers on some estimates for year-end surplus figures. I was just curious if uh, there were going to be any surprises that were good or bad there. And uh, although preliminary, no surprises on the good or the bad side, really, to report at this point in time. Uh, we spoke about swipe cards and stuff of that nature. And uh, uh, we're going to really wait to see and get some reports. I guess the board will be allowed to have some reports at the end of September, still sort of a work in progress and putting everybody up on the system and getting uh, intelligent, meaningful summary executive reports out of the system. So I look forward to getting that in the September. Uh, we spoke about uh, the long range plan, the 43, I believe it was $43 million number that was forced around, at, I guess, at the last board uh, meeting. I had asked that that number be given to the observer. Uh, I haven't seen it yet in the Observer, and I believe the reporter is going to be getting it shortly, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, two other things, PSD and G-Audit, uh, as everybody knows, you know, we've had all kinds of questions regarding our energy bills in the past, and it's been a slow, painful progress in trying to ascertain information that is useful. Uh, PSEG is scheduled to come in here within the next month, I'm going to call it. Uh, some of the times we'll be talking and getting everybody together to do the vacation schedules and whatnot. So hopefully I'll have some more information to report for everybody at our next board meeting. And uh, last thing I'd ask really, uh, what the status is with our accountants. Uh, are they, have they started year-end audit, you know, fiscal year-end 2013? And they will start that audit by before the end of August. I'll get the next five, six, seven days. And they'll be through them, maybe. And I also asked uh, Mr. O'Hardy about some of the audit points that were brought out of the last audit. Uh, if you recall, I believe there were 13 audit points that needed to be addressed. And have, in fact, have they, in fact, been addressed and, and corrected and solved? And all but one is up in question right now. And I believe he's probably on Solve. I just don't want to answer, so I'll report that. Because everybody knows you don't want to have water points showing up multiple years in a row. Bad things happen if you get them back two years in a row, so we want them to go away. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hebner. Public
public relations. We hope that we meet next week. Shared services. Thank you. The Mayor and Council thank Dr. Jango for working so effectively um, to create the ordinance for school traffic as a um, shared service and um, they commended all the work that he helped um, to bring forth. Also, um, the traffic plans um, that have were drawn up years ago, um, they're only a work in progress. It's my understanding that there are board members stating that the high school circle will be taken out. Um, there's people that are upset about it. Um, I asked the superintendent about this. There's nothing etched in stone, and, and that was unbeknownst to him. Um, also, as part of the shared service, the borough will be doing line striping for the fire lanes around the schools and the crosswalks in the street. Transportation. We had a meeting last night and uh, we got a copy of the uh, books that we had presented out to the van drivers for uh, the 13, 14 year of what they can came do and uh, everything else. Uh, also, we're buying two van buses this year, uh, 29 passengers, and we're going to be looking at um, ordering like two buses every year to try and catch up the fleet on a rotating basis. But if we can keep them under, I believe, uh, 15 years, you get more money for them. It might even be 10. But around the 10 year mark is when it really starts showing that they're taking a beating. So yeah, it's going to be looked at though in the future. Uh, we also went over uh, a letter or two about the uh, complaint from the parents that might keep that bus last year, but now they're in a different school. They moved up a grade. Why can't they get bus this year? And it's the usual, you know, you live, without, you live beyond the limits, or within the limits of walking, what you did before. And lastly, um, there is a concern about the busing and dismissal of the kids at Roosevelt School, whereas the buses are trying to pull in and everybody's going out. Uh, the kids are just running between the buses, there's like no control. Uh, suggestions made that we're going to look into and review that maybe the walkers can get released first and then the bus people can get released second or vice versa so we don't have a running between the buses. You know, once the bus is full, the bus wants to pull out. We saw the walkers running to their parents' cars because they hung up a little. So that, that's going to be reviewed and also about possibly cutting off uh, and uh, a part of the circle that's just for the bus and the parents can't get in there to make it a little bit, bit more difficult. And the other suggestion was maybe the buses could pull on the side along the uh, administration building and have the buses there. But that's all going to be looked at uh, down the road. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Uh, traffic liaison. Uh, yes, the uh, mayor and council have introduced and had the first reading on ordinance 13-1992 uh, regarding the change in uh, parking and some of the traffic flow, primarily at the high school, middle school, and Kennedy. Uh, second reading will be at the first reading in September, and then there's a, once it's approved, there's a 20-day publication period. So hopefully by the end of September, uh, the new parking rules will be put in place. And there are significant differences, uh, not only the expanded no parking areas of the high school, but around Kennedy School where they could park away for the kids if they moved, there's been no parking. So what we hope to do is, uh, through the Public Relations Committee, somehow get it up on the website with maybe maps or pictures or something to spell it out for the parents. And the police are going to be very aggressive uh, once this is posted to take it and make sure the traffic uh, uh, moves and that the, that the parking, the new parking rules are adhered to. Uh, there's, they're also looking at other traffic flow options uh, that aren't in the ordinance, but uh, there are other issues that they're working on. And the crossing guards are all set and assigned. There are some modifications from where the posts were last year based on use, but uh, Lieutenant Marta says that everything is in place and uh, ready for the start of school. Thank you, Mr. Sessler. Uh, CPAC? 
and legislator. Um, as part of the um, Trenton State Leadership Team, um, we have our meeting on the 7th in Trenton, and the Department of Ed is working on enhancing student um, performance. They're, they're continuing to work on updates to that student um, and achievement. Um, the NJEA, the contributions to healthcare, expires next year. So um, I think they're going to start working on that. Um, the, the, the contribution that they're getting, that is fun. That was a three-year um, contract. Uh, also, uh, the Special Ed Task Force um, is moving forward uh, because New Jersey still pays the highest amount um, for Special Ed. And uh, Senator Ruiz has a bill which will be um, heard in lame duck session which um, is asking that all POEs are given extra time to complete their budgets. Um, that's supposed to be voted on by December. Uh, the State Department of Ed wants um, every child from grade one up to be tested for dyslexia. This is extremely expensive and will be a big burden on the Board of Ed to do this testing. Um, so they're going back and forth with this um, with this bill. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be heard, but they are going back and forth with it. Um, also, um, I would like to commend um, Dr. Jango and Mrs. Primelli and the administration for all the diligent work that they've done over the past year and a half, um, bringing curriculum, um, all types of programs to the students. Um, I know that the, the issue of the report that was seen in the Star Ledger um, is over a four-year period, and Dr. Hopefully, Dr. Jack Owens is going to explain that um, for the public. But as far as the work that they've done, it's extreme. It's exemplary. So thank you very much for all that you've done. Also, the borough is going to put out an email blast. Um, after the second reading of the or of the track ordinance, so that parents will be able to go and view that they're going to post the ordinance um, on the website, so parents will be able to go and look at that and ask questions. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. Uh, next, we move on to public comments on any item. Board member comments. I think they're, they're, the last time I remember, they're reassigning one of them. They're not adding one at this point. However, Lieutenant Murkow is looking at pulling a crossing guard from somewhere on the park where nobody uses it and possibly moving it over there. So nothing has been settled that he's going to look at it to get in the school. He does have the resources for moving people out. Because it's very, very dangerous that you can sit the other crossing guard in the middle and in a perfect world, the kids should walk to the middle, but the parents drop and go, and the kids, walk, they cross on the corners, and the parents are busy, and they're, you know, trying to get to work on time, and they don't stop. So it would be great if that could be done. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, under legislative work, um, the governor um, vetoed Bill S-1191, um, which would have created barriers to school districts, um, efforts to save taxpayers um, funds by subcontracting services. So he, he vetoed that. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, this time we will move into executive session, resolve pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act at the board meeting closed session at this time to discuss confidential matters pertaining to personnel negotiations, student matters, and or attorney client privilege. It is expected that the matters discussed in closed sessions shall be made public as soon as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can we get a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor?